the COOdoSomething.org. I've been here for over seven years. And I run um, four main departments of Do Something. I run the national campaigns, which is sort of the crux of what we do on a programmatic level. I run the um, business development department, marketing department, and uh, finance. Wow. That is a lot. It's a lot of fun. Did you start out doing that? Uh, we only had seven people when I started, so couldn't we didn't really have departments. They didn't exist. Um, but yeah, I started out doing similar stuff to what I'm doing now. Uh, I started out running campaigns and doing business development, and that's probably the sort of largest part of what I do, making sure that our corporate funders come on board, and then also making sure that we have these amazing cause campaigns to run. Uh, you know, uh, we're running 25 in 2013. I came on board in 2005. I was looking to do um, a not-for-profit job uh, just because I, you know, that was just my calling, my passion. I was an econ major in school. All my friends were going off to consulting firms. That sounded like terrible and boring and horrible right. for the world. So I was like, I refuse. Uh, and then I found to something on Idealist, the best place to look for not-for-profit jobs. And I love the combination of uh, being able to look at all different causes, so I didn't have to just pick the environment, cancer, poverty, whatever, mm -hmm. that I could focus on everything across the board, and that really sort of appealed to my sort of sense of social justice, um, to be diverse. Like, so many people do stupid shit, and so many people are in, like, horrible jobs that are horrible for the world, and there's this, like, cognitive dissonance that they're like, whatever, I might be screwing people over all day long, but, like, who cares? And that would never be for me. Both my parents are, are sort of really serious about social justice, and my mom's a piano teacher, and my dad's involved in education his whole life, so I just think it's about how you raise your kids. Um, and so, uh, you know, uh, I was forbidden um, from becoming a lawyer. That was like, you know, <laughs> that I couldn't do that no matter what. My dad was like, you'd be a great lawyer, but you're forbidden, so forget it. Um, <laughs> and my mom was like, what about women's rights or environmental lawyer? My dad was like, no, absolutely not. I uh, didn't really want to go down that route too much anyway. Uh, and so, you know, I just think, again, it's important to do what you love, and I love it here. So I'm, I'm just so lucky to, to have this opportunity in this position. I actually didn't volunteer that much when I was in high school. I, I can barely point to any volunteering experiences that I had, mm -hmm. uh, but I think do something is a big difference. We have a presence in half of all high schools across the country, so uh, and you know the ability to be in, in more. So if you're a teenager right now and you want to give back, I mean, we have every cause, every issue you could possibly want to volunteer around, which I think is pretty cool. As Do Something is seen, the number one reason why people volunteer is because someone asks them. Right. And so right. I think if someone had asked me, I would have done it, but, you know, it, no one did. So I think there's two challenges. The one that's shared by every organization is funding. Always mm -hmm. looking for funding, and I think Do Something, as we've raised our national profile, the funding has come more easily, which is fantastic. Uh, and then the second is just how to reach young people. And, you know, when we, when Nancy joined in 2003, Facebook didn't exist. Uh, no one was sending text messages. Uh, you know, none of these, right. YouTube didn't exist. Uh, none of these platforms that we now use right now to reach young people even existed. And so the advancement of technology has really just, you know, supercharged what we can do and the ways in which we can reach young people. And so, of course, those two concerns are still out there, but... It's been amazing to see them sort of break away with the um, you know advances that we've seen. Our best success is that uh, our social media guy Calvin three weeks ago, um, well he always does an amazing job, but three weeks ago in particular he did such a great job um, using the Do Something Facebook page that we were actually the most talked about brand on Facebook, more than Disney, wow. more than Obama, more than any company you can think of. Um, I think something like 16 million people were talking about us, so it was awesome. It was incredible. What do you think? really differentiates you guys from any other nonprofit that's doing, I guess, engagement-related things? Uh, so I think it's two things, and these are both sort of internal things. One is culture. Uh, just like the culture of do something is undeniable. You come in here and, you know, everyone loves each other. They drank the Kool-Aid, like, whoa. <laughs> and uh, you, you feel it when we when we get our karaoke nights on. Uh, yes. And you should check out our culture book. It's unfucking believable um, it's, it's just so fun. Uh, I know, actually. And the second thing is um, data, that we're mm -hmm. so lucky to be able to have two data analysts on staff, and so everything we do is data-driven, whether that's A-B testing, using Optimizely, getting weekly numbers, um, you know, it's just it's just a breath of fresh air. And I don't blame other organizations. Um, organizations are, if you get government funding, you're expected to have 7% overhead. If you get foundation funding, you're supposed to have, you know, thus and such percent. You're fighting for individual donations. Right. We're really lucky that our business model affords us to have these certain things, but 
I mean, I, you know, the people who are, I'm on the board of Care for the Homeless, a homelessness organization in New York City, and they just don't have the luxury. I mean, they're literally, you know, feeding people hand to mouth, making sure people have health care, and, you know, when it's the government who sets your funding, it's, it's really difficult. Every, every moment, anytime there's a question, a conflict, whatever it is, you need to say the sentence, what does the data say? And boom. There you go. And then if that's incorporated into everything you do, it stops being, you know, what does the person with the most power say? But it's like there's that quote that's like whipping around the internet right now that's like, uh, when there's data, let's look at the data. When there's no data, like, trust my opinion. Um, and so you're really getting away from just trusting people's opinions and, and saying, what does the data say? And if that happens enough, more people, uh, it's easier to fight back against people with data because, you know, you can... It's data. Just look at it. I don't care what you think. Boom. And so it's awesome and it makes things so much, uh, so much more successful. Do Something has an amazing, uh, you know, group of wonderful, 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 smart people who know us and you get on the phone and call someone. I think all too often people try to do it themselves, but just call someone. And for instance, our Do Something and, and um, but not even research. You literally call a person. Like internet research, it's like, will only get you so far. So like, there's this Do Something award winner, um, Eric Lustrum, and he's working on education in Africa. For a while, he would like call me every like two or three months and just be like, hey, I have a question about business development. Or like Seth, who was just on the Do Something Awards last week. He'll call me and be like, hey, I'm writing a contract. Do you have any sample contracts? And I'll send him my sample contracts. It's just like, call someone who's done it. It's, you know, and so they'll call right. me for stuff. And then when I don't know something, you know, I'll call someone else, which is, you know, just so great. What know? is your goal for 2013 to get it? Um, uh, well, in general, the, everything we're doing right now is a sprint for acquisition. So it's just getting more members. So I don't know the exact numbers, but I think it's probably like 2 million teenagers by 2013, something like that. Um, so that, that's, that's definitely the goal, to, to run our campaigns, you know, twice as well as we ran them the year before, and um, reach that sizable chunk of the teenagers in America. And I know you talked a little bit earlier mentioning word of mouth and how one member kind of encourages another one to join or like get involved. Is that prominent or do you find that a lot of, like, is that a good way to... to it's the best way, absolutely. Is it, do you feel like that's one of the top um, methods? Um, I don't know if you call it a method, but... Uh, well, so, so there's two things. You can have word of mouth in the real world, and then you can have word of mouth online. Right. And so do something big, uh, friend referrals into all of our campaigns. And it's been an excellent way to get young people to tell other young people about the campaign. So it's definitely a top way that we, um, that we market our campaigns to young people. Yeah, that's great. And also, you don't want to volunteer alone. You want to volunteer with friends. Yeah. So it's not even like refer a friend. It's like just like get your friends to hang out with you and do this. Mm -hmm. It's like way more fun. Just, I want to ask because you run national campaigns. How do you decide what to run? Like, when you think creatively and you figure out, like, if I run this campaign, like, how does that happen? So there's three places we go to get our data on that front. Uh, one is just our website. So we have like a million people coming to our website every month. And yeah. if all of a sudden there was a huge spike in the animal welfare section, we'd be like, boom, we got to run something on animals that's running hot in, you know, teens' minds. Uh, two is, is we ask them. We have a youth advisory council. We do national surveying. You know, every time we have interns in our office, college interns, high school interns, it's like, What's good? Like, what's going on? What should we be focusing on? Um, and then the third, of course, is like the national news media. You know, bullying and suicides is on the scene. Like, that's obviously something we need to cover. Is there a current event that's happening that we want to respond to? Um, and so those are sort of the three main places we, we go to, to figure out what's up. Um, we also have on our website, in addition, we have uh, the largest uh, project gallery of youth led projects. We have like 20,000 plus. Um, examples of a project that young people have done and so we always like look through there see what they're doing sort of all that good stuff that's great